Today we dive even deeper into the Indian food scene of Greater Seattle. We discover a place that sells Indian style pizza. Mmm, it is topped with butter chicken. This video also contains thali, papri chat, cardamom scented pancakes, four tier tiffin box with slow cooked lamb curry, various breads, and various curries. During digestive breaks, we check out cherry blossoms, take a nature walk near the U district, get mesmerized by a shop that sells gargoyles and more. Ready or not, like this video to support our channel and let us commence this food adventure. Hello, Hello darlings! Today is Tuesday, which means some restaurants are closed. But no worries, we do have options. Fewer, but still plenty. Before we delve deeper into the food tour, we want to thank Kamatir for sponsoring this video. Kamatir isn't like any other coffee. It's barista quality coffee brewed better through science and flash frozen to lock in flavor and freshness in a 100% recyclable capsule. Kamatir partners with the best regional specialty coffee roasters. Monthly shipments come right to your door, frozen in recyclable packaging. Today, let's try these three dark, medium, and light blends. To make hot coffee, drop the frozen puck in an empty mug. Then add 6 to 8 ounces of hot water to melt and stir. So this one, it has notes of strawberry, kumquat, and chamomile. Smells so rich. A little tannis. It starts off acidic and then it ends sweet. To make iced coffee, fill a glass with 6 to 8 ounces of water and ice. Then pour the melted capsule on top and mix. It smells like powdered nut. Yeah, it is nutty. Actually, this is nutty, sweet, and creamy one. And if you're craving an iced latte instead, fill a glass with 6 ounce milk and ice. Then pour the melted capsule on top and mix. So you can prepare this one with your milk of choice. This is whole milk. So this one has notes of dark chocolate, almond, and berry. Wow! <laughs> this is the richness I'm always looking for. This will be my summer coffee. Mmm! Wow! I love it. I imagine these coffee capsules will be great for camping trips and even to enjoy on flights. You can melt a great cup of coffee anywhere you go. A helpful tip! Loosen that frozen puck by running it under hot water. You can melt the capsule in the fridge overnight. Head over to Kamatir.com and save 30% on your first order when you use my code MISSMINA30 at checkout. Shipping is free. For lunch, we're checking out Desi Tadka Indian Grill, which started out as a food truck. And now they have a restaurant in Bellevue. It's a family-owned business that's said to serve authentic North Indian cuisine, specifically Punjabi food. Their dishes are vegetarian only with a selection of vegan options. It's 11.30 a.m. and they just opened. Upon entering, order and pay at the counter, then have a seat. The server will bring the food to you. One side is painted bright orange. The other side has decorative wallpaper made of floral motifs. Glitter is sparsely embedded. First up is the special curry pakoda with basmati rice, both garnished with fresh herbs. The curry contains lentil, Punjabi spices, and vegetable pakoda. We now have a lake of curry, nearly overflowing off some edges of the plate. We ordered a mild spicy, but does it feel mild to you? It's spicy. <laughs> that is a very cozy taste. Very creamy. Huh? And it is spicy and spiceful. Oh, it was getting hot already. I gotta take this off. <laughs> Here is veggie pakoda. Pakoda are fritters. They're commonly made with gram flour. In this situation, they are covered in curry. Savory, salty, and delicious. And the temperature of it, it's fresh and hot, so I feel like I'm eating a little mini sun. Because the pakora has so much flavor, I want to eat it like a umeboshi, have a bite of it, and have a bite with the curry and the rice. Chole batura. Pickle, salad. This yeah. is chole, and this is batura. And together is chole batura. Yes, ma'am. And here comes your tali. Wow. My best it here, ma'am. Thank you. All right, ma'am. Awesome. So this is the butter naan, and this is the lacha parata. Let's focus on the chole. This chickpea curry is cooked with tomato, onion sauce, and spices. <laughs> Tastes like a sweet potato. There's an earthiness to that. It is a gingery. So good. Mm. Let's have it with the batura. 
Batura is a puffy fried bread that originates from Punjab. If I was a fairy, I'd go in there and sleep in there. Oh my, that beautiful sound! Let's unite the chole and batura. How is it, mommy o? Mm. Oh wow! Good beginning of this food tour. Mm. First, I shall have only the batura. Definitely tastes fried. It is very savory. The closest thing I could describe it to is like tempura flavor. The outside of tempura. This <laughs> time, let's eat it with the chole. I am so glad we have amazing Indian food here in Washington State. All right, we got pickles here. I see lotus root, carrot, soy tea, and oval. Very tangy. So tangy, my eyes are like popping. That wakes me up like coffee. <laughs> Called the special tali, this dish comes with four curries, four sides, and your choice of naan or roti. Paneer curry, this is gulab jamun, this is rice, this is dal, this is curd, this is uh, sagwan, this is uh, spinach, salad, it's a pickle, it's like chickpeas. On to the butter paneer curry. Sweet and creamy, not spicy. The paneer, uh, the texture, think of it as like a firm tofu texture. These two curries may look similar due to their color. The sarusong kasag has a thicker texture and is made of mustard greens and some spinach. Creamy and salty. Ooh, spicy too, it, it kicks in. The dal makhani has whole black lentils, kidney beans, and butter. The mustard green curry is much spicier than the dal makhani. Let's tone down the flames with their house-made yogurt. Balance cool and temperature. We gotta pair these curries with butter naan. How is it with the sarasong kasag? <laughs> Tastes so good. I gotta have it with that naan. It really elevates the flavor. What makes it all the better is you get some of that burnt flavor combined with the curry. It's an extra layer of flavor. These guys look similar, but this is a lacha paratha. And this one also got some burnt action going on. Naan with the kabuli chana, which is white chickpea, also known as garbanzo beans. Wow! Shall we pair it with the rice? Sweet. Which of these four are your favorite curry? That one, the sweet and creamy. Because it's a sweet. <laughs> no, this is sweet too. It's a sweeter. This is my favorite of these three breads. The batura is my favorite. This one tastes so good alone and with the curry. If you guys come here and order the exact same thing we got, I recommend you start eating the curry pakora first. Because after you eat all these other curries, that one tastes mild in comparison. For dessert, we have the kheer, which is made with basmati rice, milk, and sugar. Very cardamomy. Because this one has like a floral feeling, I want to put it in the category of like a fairy food. Something that fairies would like. Gulab jamun, we meet again. This fried ball of dough is a milk-based dessert, soaked in syrup flavored with rose water. On a scale from 1 to 10, how sweet is it? 9. You definitely need a coffee or tea with that. That was delicious, and we agree, it's a good price. Price varies on many things. First off, at a restaurant, like the cost of ingredients, rental price of that space. And this area is, uh, I don't think it's cheap because it's Bellevue. This restaurant is next to a Bellevue Square, which has a shopping mall, movie theaters, and lots of restaurants. On weekends, parking gets so competitive around this area. There is like traffic to get into the parking garages, and there's like major traffic within the parking garages. <laughs> I'm just letting you guys know this because, you know, part of food and travel, you need to think about logistics. And the service here, the customer service is awesome. They're very friendly. Let's drive over Lake Washington. There's something special I want to show you. Something very seasonal. The cherry blossoms at the UW Quad, paired with the Gothic architecture, makes it all the more beautiful. From the brick pathways and triangular green lawns, flower admirers everywhere. Come for the cherry blossoms, stay for the people watching. Really cool how some flowers grow directly from the trunk. Oh you rebels! During our walk around the U District, a shop called Gargoyle Statuary caught my attention. 
Established in 1992, this business is densely packed with Gothic-style objects. You'll find mystical and pagan items, lots of skulls, dragons, and really cool stuff. Work by local artists are sold as well. I found a horned skull door knocker. It came home with me. It's for the office. A few minutes north are two parks, Cohen Park and Ravenna Park, where you can enjoy cherry blossoms almost all to yourself. Below these trees, each with thousands of mini branches, is a brick building that looks historic. It's the bathroom. Next to what I believe is another cherry blossom, a woman named Mami O swings. She then crosses a bridge over a creek. We're in Seattle, but the dense vegetation and this wildish side trail makes it feel like we're away from the city. My calves are getting such a good stretch going up this route. <laughs> Watch the head. This sign got eaten up by the tree. I do believe this is the turkey tail mushroom. It's dinner time. This next restaurant serves contemporary Indian cuisine and is woman-owned. The chef was born and raised in India, specifically Uttar Pradesh. The chef also has another restaurant called Misha 127. That one we haven't been to yet, but we'd love to. We shall sit in the back room, near the open kitchen. The counter is tiled with an eye-popping floral pattern. There is outdoor seating if you don't mind vehicular sounds black plate, black napkin, and golden utensils. And if you flip it, you could use them as chopsticks. That's how slim they are. We begin with a complimentary dish, green pea soup with mini goat cheese kulcha. Dip and sip. It's really good, really good. It comes in the double lined glass cup. It's like a puffy dry bread, teeny. We're gonna dip. It's a soup, so it's warm. That first bite though is the best because you have that piece, that little piece of bread and then the uh, goat cheese on the top. As much as I'm craving a cocktail, tonight I'm ordering a non-alcoholic drink, the Yam Shake. It's got mango, milk, and honey as pistachio bits and dried rose petals embellish the surface. Ooh, you know that reminds me of Milkis, the Korean drink. I love those flower petals, it adds more texture. Ooh, that is refreshing. It feels a little carbonated. Okay, this is the ice cream floating on the top. You can mix it all up and drink it, or you could drink it first and then have the ice cream. Papadi chat is a vegetarian dish made of masala potatoes, mung sprouts, and tamarind chutney. The yellow topping that kind of looks like cheese is sev. This vibrant presentation inspires me. I've extracted its colors and made a gouache painting using this palette. I'll post the finished painting on my Arts and Crafts Instagram, at Creative Chill Out. The pomegranate seeds are lined up like buttons, while the plate looks like a flower with a hundred petals. It is so heavy, a pound! A pound? No yeah. way! <laughs> yeah! The bottom layer is firm and crunchy. It's a refreshing dish. It's lightly tangy. It tastes very light and mild compared to everything else we ate today. We're almost done and I'm starting to feel some spiciness mm -hmm. and there is a light sweetness. Here comes the four-tiered tiffin box. The penthouse contains kosha mangsho, a slow-cooked Bengali-style lamb curry. This one's topped with fried and salted potatoes. Next is the house dal, specifically black lentils, pulao, basmati rice, pickles and salad. Part of tonight's culinary orchestra includes cheese gulcha with tomato chutney. Gulcha is fermented stuffed flatbread. This variation is filled with chili flakes and cheese. Wow, it's good. <laughs> First, I'm gonna have it without the sauce. It's kind of like an inverted pizza. So spicy for me. And it is spicy because of those chili flakes. I'm starting to cry. <laughs> I'm starting to get lightheaded as well. My hearing is getting funny. The plate base is so smooth, it moves like a turntable. Buttery. The kosha mangsho contains caramelized onion, tomato, garlic, and ginger. It tastes hearty, 
It's something that I definitely would crave on like a cold winter night. Delicious tea. <laughs> Delicious tea? Delightful. <laughs> the lamb curry is far less spicy compared to the chili kulcha. The black lentil curry also has mung beans and red beans. That one, it has a deeper flavor. It's a little bit more earthy compared to the lamb curry. So we have raw red onion. And then these cute little guys, they are sprouted mung bean. We tried the pickled tomato, garlic, and ginger. Warning, extremely strong flavors. So enjoy a little at a time. Otherwise, your taste buds might get shocked. When you first look at the salad, it looks a little modest. However, there's a lot of flavors going on. Very, very special salad. Which of these two do you like more? I prefer the black lentil curry. Though I think more people will probably prefer the lamb curry. I like both, but this dal is quite different from other dal. We just grew another stomach for dessert. The malpa rabri sounds so good. These cardamomy fried pancakes sit in milk pudding. Has similar aesthetics to the am shake I had earlier, thanks to the dried rose petals and pistachio. It's so buttery. It's so good. I might be dreaming about that tonight. I can taste evaporated milk. The interior is awesome. It's like super soaked in flavor. It's like a sponge. The edges are a little bit more tougher. It is quite sweet. If we ate this on a totally clean palate, if this is the first thing we ate, I think we would really feel the sweetness. I can eat it as breakfast. Three days later and 18 miles away, we try Indian style pizza in Everett. It has a fancy blue side with tufted chairs and a cozy casual brown side with booths. For the Indian buffet, head straight to the back. For the dessert lovers, I'm told that this is a type of gulab jamun. Today, Mommy O and I shall focus on pizza. Oh wow, there's like 15 types of Indian pizza. There are non-Indian pizza options as well. You can choose the sauce and type of crust. Hello to the butter chicken pizza. We chose the white sauce which is made with cream, yogurt, and spices. It's got some green peppers and onion too. Cheese bubbles hug the crust. What's the size? Large. A large pizza is traditionally 14 inches, but a large pizza here is 16 inches. So you get an extra large pizza for the price of a large. Not sure if this deal will change in the future, but for now, it's a pretty good deal. The best pizza I ever had. I can eat it every day for lunch. Wow. I was thinking this might be a very heavy pizza and like really curry-licious but actually it's like a good balance of curry you know some pizzas are very greasy this one is like a good balance chicken is so tender <laughs> so so the second slice tasted stronger of curry just like for example a pepperoni pizza every other bite you get more or less pepperoni here, you get more or less curry for every other bite. And some bites have more cilantro. By the way, I love their open sign. It's so hyper. After lunch, we went home and I edited this video. Hope you enjoyed part 3 of the Indian food tour series. Stay tuned for more food tours, local and abroad. Remember to subscribe and hit that notification bell. For food and travel in Korea, check out my other channel, Sweet and Tasty TV. Toodles, my noodles. There are so many Indian restaurants, and as usual, I did hours of research, studied menus, read reviews across different platforms, wrote notes, coming up with an itinerary, mix and matching, figuring out what's the best combo. It started to feel like an academic process. Remember, there is no such thing as a perfect restaurant or a perfect itinerary. And our experiences can be subjective from one day to the next. You can plan and hope for the best possible result, but you can't control the external force and sometimes you can't even control yourself or your mood. It's just things happen the way they are. So, whoa, whoa, <laughs> it zoomed in my face. Okay, this is the paratha. When you blow some air in through your throat, oh, it's even better. Do you know what I mean, mom, when I say that? Yeah. It doesn't have a really nice, like, yeah. aroma inside your throat. <laughs>
It's dinner time. This next restaurant serves contemporary Indian cuisine. If we're leisurely dining, not filming, then I would definitely go sit in the first room with the curtains. It's more moody. The cup makes the presentation all the better, as the triangular parts glisten from whichever angle you observe. Thanks again to Kalmatir for sponsoring this video. Head over to Kalmatir.com and save 30% on your first order when you use my code MISSMINA30 at checkout. Shipping is free. Chule <laughs> mokbu chule. Chule means wants to dance <laughs> in Korean. After chole, I will dance. There is a dance at the end of this video. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah.